Hi, my name is Jane Powell. Welcome to Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation. This is a program showcasing community involvement and today my guest is um, going to make you very happy. It's Stephanie Tyree, Executive Director of the West Virginia Community Development Hub. Stephanie, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for having me, Jane. I'm happy to be here. And um, I can't wait to share with everyone information about the Hub because I think it's something we hear about, but we really aren't quite sure everything that happens sure. at the Hub. So let's just jump in, and why don't you tell me about West Virginia Hub? Well. Probably the reason you feel that way is because we do a lot of things. You do do a lot of things. <laughs> so the Hub's a statewide community mm -hmm. development nonprofit. We're focused on working with small rural communities to help community volunteer leaders in those places revitalize and grow and improve their communities in the way that they want to. Yeah. So when you say rural communities, it is a statewide program, is that right? That's right. We work across the state. Typically each year we work with between 12 to 20 communities in an in-depth monthly way. So we're showing up every month in the community and helping volunteer community teams work on projects that they've identified mm -hmm. that they want to work on. We really only work with communities that are about 15,000 and below. So we're focused on working with communities that don't have a main street organization functioning or mm -hmm. um, uh, active maybe urban renewal authority. Mm -hmm. It's communities that are trying to build capacity to grow those type of programs, um, but they're usually not at that point yet. We work with communities that are anywhere from 500 to 15,000. Wow. But that's a lot of West Virginia. So yes, it sure is. <laughs> we work pretty much across the state. And those sometimes would be the forgotten communities. So I'm sure they're so happy that you're there. Well, I think that they do sometimes get left out of the conversation about what's happening in West Virginia, but mm -hmm. what we see is that there are really amazing, passionate, innovative leaders in each of these communities. And the way that we come to work with them is that they reach out to us mm -hmm. and they say, we want to work with you. Sometimes that's through a specific program. Sometimes that's to tackle a specific problem that they have, but each time it's them really taking the initiative to say we know that we can do something to improve our community can you help us so you know they're serious mm -hmm. yeah so when you do this you're helping to build the um, economic development infrastructure almost of a, of a rural community is that right that's right so the hub believes that community development is at the core of economic development mm -hmm. and sometimes when we talk about economic development, we don't think about community development because we're so focused on job growth and business development. Mm -hmm. But for any of those things, people are at the center of them and leadership is at the center of them. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is to invest in people in, these, in rural communities and invest in growing their leadership. And what that means is meeting them where they are, asking them, what do you want to work on in your community? What's your vision mm -hmm. of how you see your community's future. So you're not telling them, you're asking them. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we help them think about how are we gonna tackle these ideas and these challenges, what resources are out there, and who can we connect you to to help you achieve your goals. So the hub is all about being a connector. Mm -hmm. We don't have expertise in everything, but what we do have is a really strong, diverse network of partners, resource and service providers around the state mm -hmm who want to be connected with these communities, and we often use those partnerships to help communities achieve their goals. So the hub is now 10 years old, is that right? That's right. So you've had 10 years to build this network of, of support, and communities learn from that. That's right. Yeah, we're excited to be moving into our 10th year this year, and over that 10 years, I think we've grown ourselves and learned a lot. We've worked with about 40 different communities in that mm -hmm. time, and um, we've run a number of different programs and have focused on growing some specific networks. So mm -hmm. we were really involved in the local foods work when we first uh, emerged mm -hmm. in about 2009. And uh, over the last five years, we've been really passionate about addressing abandoned and dilapidated buildings. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that the foundation cares about too. Mm -hmm. uh, and we feel like blight and dilapidated buildings are a persistent challenge in every community Absolutely. across West Virginia, uh, large and small. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the 
solutions to address those challenges have to be made at a statewide level. And so one of the things that we try to do is to knit together a network of communities that are working together to address those solutions so that they can bring in new businesses and uh, redevelop those dilapidated buildings in a way that's cost effective. Mm -hmm. So as you've talked during our conversation, you've talked so much about leadership and I know that's very important and I know you have um, some great stories about leaders. Yes, yeah, so where to start? Um, so I think I will share a couple of stories. I love that, <laughs> it makes it real. Yeah, mm. so um, you know, like I said, we've worked in 40 communities over the last 10 years and each of those communities, the work has looked different, they've mm -hmm. come through different programs, um, but I'll tell you about a couple of different ones. So. Um, the hub has two offices. Okay. And one of our offices has recently moved to Grafton in Taylor County. Oh and wow, that's fun. Our other office is in Charleston, but our northern office in Grafton um, is, uh, it's been an exciting development for us to move there because we've been working in Grafton for the last five years mm -hmm. and we've developed a really close partnership with the community in uh, 2014. They approached us with an interest in uh, joining one of our programs called Turn This Town Around. And it was some community members that were interested in, in it at first, mm -hmm. but there was skepticism by the local town leaders ah. because they felt like they had been around this wheel before, they right. had tried these programs and they hadn't been successful. And uh, the way this program works is that we work with the community members to bring a lot of people to the table and push them to think of as many ideas as they can mm -hmm. for different projects that they're going to do. And in that first year, they brainstormed 30 different projects wow. that they were gonna do in downtown Grafton to improve the community. Okay, that's aggressive. Yes, and we provided many grant funding for mm -hmm. those projects. So over two years, 23 projects were completed and each project had at least three people on their project team. So you're talking about dozens and dozens of community members yeah, that are that's putting a great result. sweat equity into the projects. They also were able to really bring in large investment on the projects. There was one project, it was their, um, a deck renovation project on their main street. It was an old building that had burned down mm -hmm. right in the middle of their main street and there had just been a facade put mm. over it. They wanted to make use of it and they wanted to turn it into uh, a gathering space, a community gathering space. They turned a 2,500 mini grant from us into $60,000 of private Go investment. Go Grafton, that's great. It, it was incredible. So over that time, there was a real shift in local leadership mm -hmm. and in their belief in what volunteers could do in the community. They put forward $30,000 to match these projects and to generate more projects. And now five years out, they're working on major redevelopment projects. They've got uh, a freight station that they're renovating, a theater that they're renovating, um, and they've recruited six new businesses to downtown and led the count, led the state in business growth. In uh, one congratulations. One time in they're on their way. So one other thing that they've done with us is they've been part of a program that we have called Energizing Entrepreneurial Communities, okay. which is a program that we are supported from the Greater Canal Valley Foundation mm -hmm. for. And that's a program that is really invested in working with community leaders to build a community that supports, promotes, and recruits entrepreneurs. Okay. So just like we have arts towns, mm -hmm. uh, we want to have entrepreneurial towns. And that looks like a lot of work for community members because it's about reaching out actively to entrepreneurs and connecting them with all the resources that are out there to support them. Mm -hmm. So Grafton was one community in that program. Um, we have also worked with Lincoln and Boone County in mm -hmm. uh, that program and in Wyoming County too. So uh, I want to tell a story about one leader okay. in one of those programs. So in Lincoln County, uh, there is a local entrepreneur that got involved in, we call it e-communities, in our e-communities program in um, 2017, her name is April Roberts, mm -hmm. and she was uh, working on making barbecue. Making barbecue. Yeah, so she was taking barbecue to different 
uh, she made had a very special barbecue sauce. She was taking us to different uh, cook-offs and barbecue contests, uh, and uh, started a food truck called Carnivore Barbecue. She got connected up with our program, and we tried to do everything we could to support her and to help the community team that she was part of recognize the support services mm -hmm. that entrepreneurs need in Lincoln County. So she came to a small business round robin mixer that we had, got connected to different resources to grow her business, and came to different trainings that we've led around social media marketing, legal support, technical support. Uh, over the last year and a half, she has moved from developing her barbecue sauce to bottling and selling it and looking to now purchase a storefront in Hamlin to sell Oh, uh, that's wonderful. Their sauce in downtown Hamlin. So this is the kind of thing that we know is possible mm -hmm. in small communities, but we believe that in order to support the entrepreneurs in our communities, in order to grow our rural downtowns, it takes a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. continuing to show up year after year, week after week, and believing in our community members and our community leaders. Well, we know West Virginia has lots of treasures, but people would be number one. So I love that you're investing in them. I know that you have some uh, events coming up, yes. some projects and some events that are coming up for 2019. Uh, there's a think tank, is that right? Yeah, so um, like I, we said, it's our 10th year, and we want to take some time this year to bring together the community members around West Virginia that care about community development mm -hmm. and have a conversation about what's happened over the last 10 years. Have we moved the needle on community development? And what's our vision for what this work looks like in the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. We're always pointing to other states that are showing innovative approaches to community and economic development growth. We see that in innovation happening in West Virginia, right. but we just think the story doesn't get out. So we hope through this think tank that we can gather some of those stories and promote them and build a network that really works together to improve community development over the next 10 years. Yeah. So that's February 27th. Okay. It's going to be at Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's interested, they should go to our website, contact us about it. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting event if you are really interested in community development. Uh, that's great. And I know you have a few other things that are happening. Um, there's um, conferences and training seminars um, happening throughout the year, and all that information is available on your website. Is that right? The best way to keep in touch with us is to sign up for our newsletter. Our I get that newsletter. newsletter. It's chocked full of information. <laughs> <Yeah>. We send <laughs> out mm -hmm. weekly newsletters with lots of information, not just about what the Hub does, but about what's happening all across West mm -hmm. Virginia. We think of it as the good news of West Virginia, mm -hmm. and, um, and also to check out our blog. And that's constantly being updated with stories um, that we write and that we gather from other places that are talking about innovation and leadership. And there's social media as well. Is that right? That's right. Sure. We're on Facebook. That's yep. the best way to keep in touch with us at WV Hub is our handle. Okay. So that would be the Facebook and the website is wvhub.org. That's right. Um, and they can get the newsletter, keep up with everything that's happening, find dates for um, upcoming events and communities that they might want to visit to see um, what they could translate to their community. I love what's happening with the Hub. Thanks, Jane. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here, and I encourage everyone to visit the website and to get the newsletter and uh, to keep up with, with the good things that are happening in our state, small but good. Well, we appreciate your support. We love what we do. We love the communities that we work with and the partners we work with, and we feel privileged to do this work. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching today um, and learning about West Virginia Community Development Hub. Come back and see us next time.